I'm here in New York seeing a bunch of cool startups at General Assembly, which is a campus for technology, design, and innovation. Who are you? So I'm Adam Pritzker. I'm a co-founder of General Assembly, originally born and raised in San Francisco. I came out to New York when I was 18, uh, where I went to Columbia. I worked at Columbia after I graduated for an economist called Jeffrey Sachs, who runs something called the Earth Institute, which studies population, poverty, and ecology. And I worked for the technology transfer part of the ecology part of the Earth Institute before I came downtown to General Assembly to start this company with Jake. And we know you're Jake, but who are you? Uh, so I'm Jake Schwartz. I'm uh, co-founder of General Assembly and in previous lives I was an investor and an entrepreneur in a bunch of different arts related businesses. Uh, most recently I was a uh, investor at a late stage venture capital firm. Yeah and you're here in Silicon Alley which is like a street with all the venture capital and all these startups and lots of fun things going on but what, what the hell is going on here and how did this all happen? So General Assembly, the idea was really kind of a grassroots community building project in New York. And what we wanted to do is we kind of wanted to get really bright kind of young entrepreneurs under one roof in a really collaborative environment. And so we leased this 20,000 square foot space and when it was completely empty, uh, Matt, who runs Community and Partnerships, would bring people through here kind of all day long figuring out, you know, what, what did the community really want and how could we cater to it? What could we build that would really resonate with kind of the New York technology and design communities? And interestingly, kind of the way the community designed this space was really as a campus. So people requested workspace, people requested communal space, people requested a library, and people requested a classroom. And the classroom is really kind of the most interesting part. So one of the initial things we did was we said, okay, well, we're not going to charge too much for the desks. You know, we know we got really bright people working here, people who have started Etsy, people who have started Vimeo, people who have won Emmys. What we do want to do is have those people teach classes to the wider community and have anybody in the New York community who wanted to come learn have that resource available. Yeah, I taught one of the classes a couple of weeks ago. What did you teach? Like, uh, on PR, we talked about how to how to get your uh, startup some PR and how to deal with you know Mike Arrington at TechCrunch or with or now. <laughs> right. How do you deal with Mike <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, interested carefully. in hearing your answer. Very careful. There it is. There it is. You're very carefully. <laughs> Um, he's now at Uncrunched, right? Yes. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was like 80 people showed up and That's awesome. uh, stayed for two hours listening to me yapper, yammer with uh, Ed Sussman, who used to be at Fast Company Magazine. So, so has anyone gotten press from the class yet? A few. We've been, actually interviewed a couple of companies since then. So, nice. Yeah. So That's it works great. out, you know, you come to class. Totally. <laughs> and so, you know, initially when we were getting started, we actually were seeded by a grant from the city. Okay. So the city backed us, the New York Economic Development Corporation. And so I think what GA is representative of is kind of a public-private partnership that's really worked. And kind of since then, we've been forming more kind of public and private partnerships to kind of help educate people in technology, design, and business. Because our core thesis, which has developed over the last year since we've been open, is really that kind of liberal arts is at the core of the American education system, and that's great. It teaches people to think critically, it teaches people to think creatively, and you know, both of us are certainly recipients of that, but clearly the skills to kind of thrive in the workforce are not being offered either to students or employees, and that's really a gap we're seeking to fill by kind of complementing these other institutions like maybe Rackspace, or like the city of New York, or like General Electric, or like KBS and P, which is an agency, who we've kind of started to form these kinds of partnerships with. Yeah, and so you guys aren't venture capitalists. You're not like uh, Paul Graham at Y Combinator. Well, no one's like Paul Graham. Well, <laughs> true, but everybody wants to be like him. That's true. <laughs> That's true. So we uh, we very expressly when we started this place wanted to create a place that was for founders by founders, and the idea being is that when you remove any specific venture capital source from the equation, a community can develop that's outside of the context of, oh, someday I want to get funded. And yeah. so what we have is we have Series A companies, we have seed companies, we have pre-seed companies, and we have you know entrepreneurs who have had several successful exits, all 
here in one place working to help each other out and, and the space is not part of one singular firm's investment strategy. Right. And that's different than like Don Patch Labs where it's Polaris Ventures and there's one VC sitting in the middle of the room and he's sort of tending to his flock, right? And that's right. And watching who's getting that's hot, right. you know, and who should we uh, take So this, we are VC round. agnostic right. in the sense that we don't in directly invest. Do you in let VCs in here? here. <laughs> we do. We are very much open to as many kind of VC community members. Yeah, we have actually, I think, over 50 venture investors who are communal members of General Assembly. And you We'll often see them hanging out on the couch or taking a meeting here. I guess it's better than their stuffy offices. I don't know. Now, how did it get this busy this quickly? Because you guys have only been around less than a year, right? Yeah. How, how, how did this happen, and, and why is there such a demand for this in New York? I mean, I, was there this innate demand that just you satisfied, or? I think the answer is really in community, in that. Uh, all of us, but really especially our partner Matt, spent a lot of time before we even built this out working and talking to people in the community about what they wanted and what they needed. And so by the time we built walls um, in this space at 902 Broadway, we already had a long list of people who were very interested in being part of that community. Yeah. And so when you have a community that sort of forms that way, it's very organic and it ha can happen very quickly. Yeah. How do you get here? Do you, uh, is there a process you go through to be allowed to hang out here and sit on the couch? Um, there is. There's an application process. Well, um, we really like backed into it, though, yeah. I would say. Is okay. that like, you know, we obviously did not expect this kind of demand. Um, we wanted to create kind of an interesting grassroots community in which you know, people could collaborate both formally in a classroom and in a lecture, um, and informally in terms of serendipitous encounters. And kind of over time, as demand outstripped the supply we could offer, um, we have started to put processes in place um, to be able to think about who might be a part of our community. Yeah. And, you know, that really is like twofold. One, it's how serious are the various people about what they do and about developing their craft and almost more importantly like what they want to give back to the community because this whole thing is based on kind of reciprocity yeah. I'd say that's the kind of core of what we do so someone may be totally brilliant but if they're not at all interested in kind of getting involved in the community it doesn't really work right yeah. how, do you, how do you keep assholes out of here because in a community space like this if somebody's disruptive or loud or you know drunk all the time or something like that, it can really destroy well, you know, what you built. Right? Because it's such a tight community, I would say that it's largely self-regulating. Yeah. Is that if you're not a good citizen, you're going to get called out on that pretty quickly. And and because it's such an important part and something we've stressed in the way we've we've recruited people to be here as well as just the general values that have been expressed in this place. Uh, you can't get away with that behavior for very long. Mm -hmm. And how, how much does it cost? Because you said it's low cost. Is it like $500 a month, something like that? Or is it more? Or um, so our dedicated membership, which is the dedicated desks in there, and there's a long waiting list for that, is, is $600 a month. Um, communal membership is currently $300 a month. And that lets you hang out Which there. gets you 24-7 access to um, all of the common areas of General Assembly, as well as early access and discounts to our classes and events as well as um, some special members-only perks like rack space hosting and uh, you know some special fireside chats that we'll program just for members. Very cool. Is, does that uh, let you meet your uh, financial demands you know, and pay for the space, or, or are you still getting subsidized by the city? No, no, so we are, um, the, the real estate portion of what we do by having members come in is, is very self-sustaining from that perspective. Um, the part that we're really excited about in terms of growing in the future is the education and the programming around that. So besides just having members, which you know we can only have 300 or so members at any one time, we also have around 3,000 people who come in and out of the space every month to attend our events and classes. Yeah. And tell me, how does that get planned? And it, I got invited. I don't even know how I got invited. So, yeah. <laughs> so hey, you should come out to. This sort of was crazy so, because the way yeah. it happened for me, I was just going to be in town, and somebody said, "Oh, you should go speak at General Assembly." And in two days, I was on stage. You know, That's awesome. Crazy. Um, so I'd say it happens like that. It, it started happening very organically. Yeah. in which people would start to come here, they would hang out, we would ask them to teach a course, they would offer that course, and kind of over time, people requested um, kind of more robust programs and said, you know, well, 
this two hour class on HTML or this, you know, five hour class on HTML is great, but like I'm really interested in kind of getting deeper into yeah. this subject matter. And so we thought, huh. So we kind of turned these one off classes into courses and these courses into programs. So, so do you have like Objective C for beginners and an uh, advanced? Essentially, subject? so we just actually launched our first a certificate program in front-end web development, which is a 60-hour, 10-week course okay. taught by two great teachers. Um, and, you know, that that course had kind of enormous demand we really never expected. So we got about 150 applications in 48 hours for about 15 spots. So clearly there's like this real desire, especially in New York, to learn this stuff. And I think if you if you think about why, it's like we have all these major kind of legacy industries of like retail and entertainment and finance and publishing and advertising. And everyone's kind of realizing now that we've reached this inflection point where technology is touching every one of those. And I think employers and employees alike are wondering, if where do we go learn about this? What are my resources? Yeah. And so GA is really... Hopefully, if we do our job right and focus on what we're doing, we're really going to become that place. So are you going to build a new kind of TEDx brand where you're going to video some of these, you know, the, the 15 people get to be in so the room and we then did, everybody else we gets did, to watch? We did do our Series A. Um, so we raised four and a quarter million dollars and yep. we raised that from Maveron, who's a firm that focuses on education. Great company, great firm. Uh, from Yuri Milner uh, and from Bezos Expeditions. And we kind of realize that there's a big opportunity here um, to offer this kind of education in technology design and business kind of through the lens of entrepreneurship. But right now what we're really focused on doing is like enhancing the experience here. So really how can we grow it? Um, how can we offer courses that really kind of affect people's lives, have outcomes? And it's just been an amazing process to kind of watch. A, a lot of people don't know this about Silicon Valley, but user groups and this kind of informal mm -hmm. and also formal education was key to starting it. And that was how we shared information between companies, right? We yep. would go to a user group and, oh yeah, totally. at our company we're doing it this way, and you would learn shit. Yeah. You know? and, and, and that was really important to the Valley growing up, right? Do you think that's really important in terms of Silicon Alley and the New York uh, startup community bootstrapping itself up? I mean, I think what we've seen through the educational stuff we've done so far and as we plan going forward is that um, the community and the social aspects of what we do is, is crucial and really inherent to the quality of the educational um, offerings that we provide. Okay. And so without a social experience, it really loses its, its core and its meaning. And, and, totally. and that's something that we are planning on focusing on really incorporating as we grow. So interestingly, like out of the community, we've developed these four pedagogical principles. <laughs> um, and what people are really seeking is kind of social, goal-oriented, application-based learning taught by top practitioners. Yeah. And the practitioner piece and the social piece are so important, right? So you talk about this, and it's one of the things that like, I don't know, you rarely kind of see how education is delivered. But that social piece is so key to learning. I mean, yeah. even at a well-established university, that's like a huge part of the learning process. And so that's something that's obviously really at the foreground here. Um, so it's, I don't know, it's been interesting right, cool. to see that kind of, as you put it, that informal kind of learning. Yeah. And you see it all the time in the dedicated workspace, right? Like CTOs getting together and troubleshooting. I'm trying to build this, I'm having this issue, what would you do? Or people who focus on UX and design, or CEOs, and it's, it's great to see that kind of shared, kind of collaborative effort. Are you building systems uh, that let people do that on their computers as well? You know, uh, you know have alumni, alumni networks, or uh, networks of advisors so we've, or we've actually of smart people we've something. already had a few um, graduates of General Assembly space um, seat geek is one uh, I think yep it is soon to follow and we are in the process of building that alumni network out which really excites us and yes the answer is we are working on some technology to enable uh, that kind of community interaction not just offline in the space but among the membership online as well what else do, should we know about this place? And, and what should we know about New York? Because it seems like 
it, New York's really changed in the last couple of years since the last time I was really spent yeah. some time here. The startup community seems a lot stronger. It's not just General Assembly. I was yeah. at, at Techstars, just hanging out in the street. You sense there's something going on here that wasn't going on two years ago. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's definitely a really exciting time to be in New York. Um, it's reaching a point where it doesn't feel like fully developed, but it's getting there, which is like a really exciting time to be anywhere um, when you're like there and it's kind of nascency. Um, so that's very cool. And I would, you know, also say that, you know, to kind of the former point about kind of all these industries being transformed, that one of the things New York really has is people with core debts who have these careers in retail. Yeah. in advertising who are like Dash teaming up modeling, yeah who are teaming up with these technologists and are building like really interesting <clears throat> compelling applications and I, I think that's very cool and it's very exciting to be a part of it and it feels a little bit like I don't know like I mean maybe saying like Paris in the 20s is a little grand <laughs> but like there is like a salon type mm -hmm. thing happening right which is like I don't I I think it's there's a density of people, yeah. of ideas, and of industries exactly. here that create all sorts of interesting, uh, you know, businesses and and products that come out of that. And I, I would say that the other neat thing is because we're New York, because we're the financial center of the world, a lot of, a lot more of these businesses have business plans. Yeah. And that's uh, I think that's a really compelling thing as we go forward. Is that I see a lot of businesses who have a, a nice a strategy for not just how they're going to build a great product but how they're going to get that to their customers and make that a sustainable enterprise. Very cool. Well, thanks for uh, building this, because it's an incredible place to come and hang out for a startup guy like me. So. Yeah, well, it's great to have you here. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks for coming by. Great. You're welcome anytime.